Hello and welcome to this tutorial on building a command line calculator using Python. In this video we'll be covering the steps required to build a basic calculator that can perform simple arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So we're going to kind of combine a lot of the things that we've already been covering. This is no means the most complex calculator you'll ever make in your life, but it's a, a project to get you starting to think about all, all of these elements and how they can fit together. So first things first, open up your code editor. I'm going for um, base code, just because I like base code, but you can choose whichever one you want to do. So first things first, as always, let's start a new file. Uh, I'm going to go for Python file, and first of all, I'm going to save it as Python calculator.py. So here we go, the first step. So to begin with, we need to import re the required libraries. So again, we've not really covered re importing libraries at this stage. However, libraries are um, elements of code that have already been made for us, so they add functionality. So rather than us making and, for example, we're going to be using the math function or the math module. So rather than having to make a module that allows us to do mathematical operations, um, the Python already comes with it and it's already pre-made, so we don't need to worry about messing around with it. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of different um, methods that comes with the math module. We're only going to use a couple of them, but I will link uh, more information about the maths module in the description below. So to begin with, we're going to import um, the math module. So we can do this by adding the following line of code. Now, this should already come pre-installed with Python, so you shouldn't need to download anything. So import math, just like that. OK, so we've imported math. So now um, the second step is to take the user input. Now, we have been doing some of this in this course, if you've been looking at the videos previously. But if you haven't, don't worry, we're going to start from the beginning. So we'll be using the built in input function to achieve this. We will prompt the user to enter the first number, then the operation they wish to perform and followed by the second number. So we're going to do this using the following code. So we're going to set num1 is equal to input. So that's the input method and we're going to be a little bit helpful and rather than just saying here you go add some text we're going to actually tell the person or tell the user what we want them to enter so we're going to give them a hint so in this case we're going to say enter the first number like that and then we're going to do the same thing but this time we're going to ask for the operator so operator so in this case we're going to ask them to enter so if i just do equals input that's the word i need in my life and i'm going to open my brackets and i'm going to say enter the operation i spelt it right yet yeah, you wish to perform and we're going to give him even more help because we're going to say you can use the plus you can use the minus you can use the multiplication and you can use the divide now i'm going to just change these to commas because it's going to get a little confusing uh like that like that and i'm going to get rid of that so plus minus why have i got two pluses plus minus multiplication and division perfect and then we need them excuse me to enter a second number so num2 equals input enter the second number like that now, at this point, we're not going to specify um, int or float. We are just made a mistake there. We are going to do this slightly different. So I'm going to teach you a new skill. So we're going to do something called converting the user input. So now that we've got the input from the user, we need to convert it to the, the appropriate data type so we can perform the desired operations on it. So we're going to convert the numbers to floats using the built-in float function. So we can do this using this line of code. So num1 equals float and we're going to pass it the value that is stored in num1 we're going to do the same for num2 and pass it the value that's stored in num2 so now when we take them in when we take the values in they come in as strings and then we are converting it to floats so the next thing we need to do is we need to perform the calculations so we need to actually ask or work out what the values are. So if, if they input six into number one and then they choose plus and then four is number two, we need to actually get the program or the computer to work out what six plus four is. 
So to do this, we're going to use a series of is, if and else, is, if and else statements to check which operator was entered and perform the corresponding operations. So we're going to do this using the following lines of code. So if operator is equal to the string value because it's a character remember of plus then i want it to the result sorry to be equal to num1 plus num2 okay so that's working that one l if l if operator is equals to minus then I want it to do result equals num1 minus num2. And then we're going to do another elif. And we're going to say elif operator is equals to the value of, what should we do next? Let's do multiply. Then I want you to do divide by num2. And again, we're going to do elif operator, I always spell that wrong, is equal to, um, it divides last, isn't it? So we've done plus, minus, yeah, we've done them all now. Um, result equals num1 divided by num2. And then, so all we've done here is we've said if the operator that the user puts in is equal to the value of the plus sign, I want you to add the two values that of the numbers together. So whatever is stored in num1, I want you to add it to the value of whatever is stored in num2. Same here, if it's equal to minus, I want you to take the value that's stored in num1 and take that away from the value that's stored in num2. If the user enters a multiplication, I want you to take the value of num1 and I want you to multiply it by the value of num2. And if the user enters a divide sign, then I want you to take the value of num number one and I want you to divide it by num two. So, final thing before we finish with this. What if the user enters an operator that isn't valid? So say, for example, they enter a bracket. Rather than crashing the program, we actually want to deal with this. So if the user enters anything other than what we've asked it to, we want to say print invalid operator entered so we tell it what's wrong okay so then the final thing that we want to do and the probably the last thing is we want to print the result so we can say print and let's be a little bit fancy here let's go um num1 um operator actually we don't need that num2 equals result and i think now i'm let, let's just let's just test it let's see what happens if it goes wrong we fix it let's run python file enter the first number six entered it in the complete wrong place and to the, let's do a plus uh, nine. Okay, so we've got an invalid. Let's have a look why. So, oh, I know why. That. I know why. Uh, let's put that into that. That and then that. Yeah, I know why. I hadn't put a space. I, I'd forgotten to put my equal sign. Let's try it again. Five. Always do, I always forget that part. Five every time plus seven. So five plus seven equals twelve. So because we've put it into a float, we've got the full float value. So technically it's a whole number, but because we've put it into a float, it will display the result as a float. So if we do it again, seven point nine uh, multiplied by seven point gives you an answer in a float now there's lots of things you can do to this you can make it so that the user can actually keep asking you can keep asking the user to enter a value you can get to the end like here and you can say instead of just stopping you can say something like would you like to uh, add another number would you like to go around again I, do you have more multiplications or more maths that you want to do 
um, and you can keep working that through that requires a function um, you could also uh, let's just check if our else um, our else works so if we go six every time v vs code needs to fix this uh, we put p in there and to the second number it says the error is uh, result is not defined so basically it's stopping it working because we entered the wrong data type so because we entered a string in rather than entering a float it kind of added the wrong thing for us so have a see if you can make it in better see if you can improve it so just one more time to prove it still works again this is uh, this is becoming a thing let's do divide by seven yeah it still works there's lots of things that you can do to improve it but that is a basic calculator and that is putting together all of the things we've learned in the last couple of videos into one big project so thank you for watching and happy coding